Spencer. All right, we're here at Cornerstone with Michael Spencer, AKA the Internet Monk, who blogs at internetmonk.com. And right. um, I first heard about Michael through the article that he wrote, or a series of blog articles that ended up becoming an article for Christian Science Monitor. Tell us a little about what you do. Well, uh, I am a campus minister at a Christian boarding school in Eastern Kentucky. That's my day job. I teach Bible, I preach lots, I oversee a large campus ministry program. I've been blogging at internetmonk.com mm -hmm. for eight years, and that has become really a uh, very uh, active bivocation and has uh, got me on the track to writing my first book for Waterbrook Press coming out in January of 11. All so right. I'm really excited about that. Yes, in January of this year, I wrote three blog posts called mm -hmm. The Coming Evangelical Collapse. Uh, I was a little annoyed and I got to thinking about some things, <laughs> wrote uh, like I often do when I was kind of passionate and emotional, never really thought about it going beyond my blog. Um, in March, Christian Science Monitor uh, was, uh, I think, looking for something to sure. go along with some data that was coming out about American religion called the ARIS study. Right. And so they picked up my piece, uh, edited it to something somewhat smaller, and then in May put it out and it became uh, a media sensation for mm -hmm. about uh, six weeks. Right. I was talking to everybody and it was a, a very interesting excursion into how evangelicals are perceived mm -hmm. by the media, by other Christians, by themselves. And uh, it's still a big part of my, my life. I'm not gonna write that book, but it's a big part of at least what I have to say when I go to a place like sure, Cornerstone. Sure, Well, tell us about some of the main things that you talked about in this article and some of the, the highlights and the things that really kind of got the, the biggest response from the, from the article. Well, I, what I said in the article that uh, apparently got the attention of lots of people was that within uh, 10 to 20 years, about half of evangelicalism was going to be, I said, a house devoid of its occupants. Hmm. Now, that caused a conversation about who are evangelicals. Right. My own denomination, Southern Baptists, say there are 16.5 million of them. Nobody believes you could find uh, half that many, and a lot of us believe there's probably, well, less than half that many. National Association of Evangelicals said there are 35 million evangelicals hmm. now. Uh, many uh, folks who are studying that think again we're probably talking about half that number. A good bit of this discussion happens around the idea of just who is an evangelical. Is it a person who responds to basically the audience oriented approach of current megachurch mm -hmm. uh, evangelicalism? Is someone who when they do come to church two or three times a year comes to an evangelical church because they like the music, they like those big programs, uh, they basically vote along those lines. Mm. Uh, is that an evangelical and are those people going to stick around for the future? Will they be here 20, 30 years from now? Will they congregationalize? Will they show any loyalty to this movement? Or is the general cultural drift uh, towards secularism going to affect evangelicalism and I think it's going to affect us deeply. We're going to see it in schools, we're mm -hmm. going to see it in media, we're going to see it particularly in some mega churches, not in all, but uh, I think we're about to sort of run out of the energy of this movement that has been so centered on bring in the people who have a very minimal view of what Christianity is mm -hmm. and call them evangelicals. We've not passed the faith on in a very predictable way and I think we've basically been making installment payments on a future crisis. The time I think is almost here we're going to start seeing that. Well it's interesting because your article came out and uh, a couple of weeks after was the Newsweek article, The right. Collapse of Christianity. I can't actually remember the title exactly. It was the Meacham article. And in that article, the emphasis was a little more on the political er aspects of evangelicalism, that the political power of evangelicals have waned. Moeller was quoted in that article talking about the demise of Christianity in the Pacific Northwest as well as in the Northeast. Um, but, I mean, if evangelicalism is that political designation or it's that kind of watered-down version that many of us talk about, uh, maybe that that is headed for collapse, but what are the signs of life in evangelicalism that you might point to? Well, let me say first of all something about that, uh, the entire Meacham observation. Sure. Um, one of the things that I feel very deeply is that the culture war approach mm. to evangelicalism has been a tremendous drain on genuine church life. 
And uh, I think one of the most frequently preached sermons since the election of a new president is some version of we were wrong hmm. in the way we have approached this culture war. We've put too much emphasis on it. The tactics we used were not helpful to what it means to be church in the West now. I, I think there's a, a general questioning of that whole culture war medium. What is hopeful? Well, here at Cornerstone, I see lots of hopeful things, mm -hmm. particularly in a lot of young evangelicals who are really not interested in refighting the 16th century battles. They want to be involved in justice issues, com compassion issues. They want to learn from the suffering church. They want to critique Western evangelicalism. They want to uh, prepare and have a vital part of a future evangelicalism that's not going to be majority white, mm -hmm. majority Western. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, that's going to make a big difference in the future. I'm not exactly sure where it's all going to come out, mm -hmm. but I am very hopeful for what I am seeing. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the ways that you're approaching, you know, your, the way you're approaching your, your blog and how you're getting your ideas out there through this blog. And I know you're, you actually have one of the most popular blogs in, among the Christian circles. And do you find that there's a good, the medium has been a good place for you to interact with those in your communities? And you know, what's the, some of the responses you're getting through the blog? Well, my experience with my blog probably is the second book I should write because hmm. uh, I'm just a guy who started blogging eight years ago after uh, the 2000 election. And uh, now in, in uh, 2009, I'm one of the top 1,000 blogs in the world. Wow. And I think what's contributed to that has been a couple of things. Um, I very much aim what I write at people who feel homeless and estranged mm. in the current evangelical environment. That is a lot of people. Yeah. Some of them are out of church, some are in the doorway, some are sitting in church going, I don't know why I'm, I'm here. Some of them are being deeply affected by change, are being deeply affected by a more aggressive secularism, a more aggressive atheism. There's just lots of things happening that have many people feeling displaced. My blog has been a, a place where I will raise those issues. Mm -hmm. I will say this is how it feels to be an evangelical now. And um, so I have an extremely diverse audience, mm -hmm. lots of Catholic readers, lots of emerging readers, and uh, we have a very large conversation about uh, how do you survive with your Christian faith intact in times like these. My particular approach has been what I call post-evangelicalism in a positive way, that the way forward includes the way back. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we need to look at the resources of the ancient church. We need to look at the resources of the broader church throughout the, uh, yeah. the uh, world. Uh, we do not have all the answers in a box right. in denominational right. headquarters anymore. Right. And uh, so where are those resources? They're out there in the broader, deeper, more ancient uh, church tradition. And so I try to plug folks in to, to that yeah. sort of thing. Last year at Cornerstone, that's actually what I was doing. And then this year I noticed at Cornerstone there are several different seminars mm -hmm. where specific things along those lines mm -hmm. are, are being communicated. So I feel really good about that. Right. Well, a little bit of, on, the, on the push in that direction then. Um, is that a, a generational thing that's responding to a particular form of Christianity and evangelicalism that really doesn't work for that next generation? So we were talking about the boomer generation, the seeker-sensitive church generation, and then the younger generation that's responding to that. So does that carry over or is that is that it's such a deep wound or deep failing that it, it, it portends badly for the next generation. Well, uh, there's a, a really <laughs> animated argument going okay. on about, uh, how, for example, how much do young people relate to the megachurch model. Right. right. Uh, it is my belief that the megachurch model is in real problems mm -hmm. with young, young people. That doesn't mean they don't show up at a mega church's college ministry. Mm -hmm. It just means that the numbers, cash, buildings, attractional approach, rather than a more community-centered, more relational, more mm -hmm. incarnational, more missional approach, uh, I, I don't think that larger view is triumphing. I, I think we're, we're going to see uh, mega churches that do things younger Christians feel are important. Yeah. Invest in 
uh, helping Christians in other parts of the world. Give them opportunities to do compassion ministries. I think they will continue to plug into those folks. But mm -hmm. I think the approach that worked with the baby boomers and the seeker sensitive right. bid, I think that's pretty much over. Yeah. I think there's a lot of questions, a lot of questions about what exactly happened there. Uh, even Willow Creek, one mm -hmm. of the flag bearing yeah. churches in this, when they looked at their own congregation discovered uh, almost half said we're ready to leave yeah. because we don't feel any sense of deep spiritual for formation here. That's an ominous warning sign yeah. that all of this uh, energy being put into this big industrial evangelical complex is not producing right. the simple thing people want that is genuine discipleship, right. real community. A lot of money gets into these things as well. Right. Michael, thanks for your time. It's been Thank a really you. good conversation. Thanks for the work you do on your website. Thank you very well. much. All right.